Question 21 says, if T is the surface tension of a liquid, then the energy needed to break a liquid drop of radius R into 27 equal drops is. Dear students, energy required it can be written as 4 pi R square into T multiplied by n to the power 1 by 3 minus 1. Dear students, here n is the number of droplets in which the liquid drop is broken into. Here n is equal to 27 and 27 to the power 1 by 3 would be equal to 3. On substituting the values, we get the value of E to be equal to 8 pi r square t, which means option number 2 for this question is the correct answer. Now let us proceed to the question number 22. Question number 22 says the surface tension and vapor pressure of a water at room temperature is approximately 7.28 into 10 to a minus 2 newton per meter and 2.33 into 10 to power 3 pascals respectively. The radius of the smallest spherical droplet which can exist without evaporation at the temperature is. Dear students, it is given that the vapor pressure is equal to 2.33 into 10 raised to power 3 pascals. Dear students, the drop will evaporate if the water pressure is greater than the vapor pressure and if the R is the radius of the water droplet, then the excess pressure in the droplet will be 2s by R. On equating it with the vapor pressure P, we can find out the value of R to be equal to 2s by P where S is the surface tension. On substituting the value of surface tension which is given to be equal to 7.28 into 10 raised to power minus 2 and dividing it by 2.33 into 10 raised to power 3, we get a value which is equal to approximately 62.5 into 10 raised to power minus 6 meters which means option number 4 is the correct answer. Let us proceed to question number 23. Question 23 says a uniform copper rod rotates freely about its perpendicular bisector. It is cooled uniformly then its speed of rotation increases, its speed of rotation decreases, its speed of rotation remains same or option number 4 which says its speed of rotation first decrease then increase. Dear students, as the rod is cooled its length would decrease which means that the moment of inertia which is proportional to L square would decrease as well. Now dear students, in such a case the angular momentum that is I omega would be constant where I is the moment of inertia which means that if I decreases omega would increase to keep the product of I omega constant. Hence for this question option number 1 is the correct answer. Now let us proceed to question number 24. Question 24 says a metallic sphere is completely dipped in water. Then choose the correct statement neglecting the expansion of sphere. First, buoyancy will be less in water at 0 degree Celsius than in water at 4 degree Celsius. Second, buoyancy will be more in water at 0 degree Celsius than in water at 4 degree Celsius. Option number 3 which says buoyancy in water at 0 degree Celsius will be same as that in water at 4 degree Celsius. Or option 4 which says buoyancy may be more or less in water at 4 degree Celsius as compared to 0 degree Celsius depending on the radius of sphere. Dear students, the density of water is maximum at 4 degrees Celsius which means the force of buoyancy which is equal to rho into V into G where rho is the density of water, V is the submerged volume of the sphere that will be complete sphere. We can see that the buoyant force is proportional to rho. So when the density is maximum, the buoyant force will be maximum as well. We can therefore write that the force of buoyancy at 4 degrees Celsius will be greater than force of buoyancy at 0 degrees Celsius because the density at 4 degrees Celsius is greater than the density at 0 degrees Celsius. Which makes option number 1 for this question as the correct answer. Now let us discuss and proceed to question number 25. Question 25 says the radius of a metal sphere at room temperature is R and the coefficient of linear expansion of metal is alpha. If the temperature of the sphere is increased by delta T, then the increase in volume of sphere is approximately. Dear students, the thermal coefficient of volume expansion can be written as 3 alpha and change in volume can be written as gamma into initial volume into delta T which will be equal to 3 alpha. Volume would be equal to 4 by 3 pi r cube into delta T and this will be equal to 4 pi alpha r cube delta t. Dear students, therefore for this question, option number 2 is the correct answer. Now let us discuss question number 26. 